Hi guys. So, happy Halloween, number one. Number two, this is my October wrap up. Alright guys, so I have basically been filming nothing but tags and unboxings this month because I didn't read anything that was new or what I felt was relevant or anybody wanted to hear my opinion on so I didn't record any book reviews. My bad dog. Also, blood red lips because I'm supposed to have my vampire fangs in right now. I bought them for Comic Con and didn't get to wear them. Went to go put them in and realized they were way too big. Super bummed. Next. Books. I used to like the swing it ponytail because I'm going back to my curly hair tonight or tomorrow. Anyway, first off, I have Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost, which is book number one in the Night Hunter series. It is about a half vampire, half human vampire hunter named Cat Crawfield. It is a paranormal romance novel, and there is one basically ongoing romance that we deal with throughout the series. This is a reread for me. It is one of my favorite paranormal romances. The characters are very snarky, very smart ass. And I have also read At Graves End and One Foot in the Grave, which are book two and three of said Night Hunter series. Like I said, I really like the characters in the series. They're very snarky, very funny, a lot of smart assery and quips back and forth, especially with our main character, Bones who is English, he did kind of feel like a spike rip off just a little bit, but past the first book he developed into his own character, which I freaking love. I didn't rate them because they're rereads. I really only rate rereads if the star rating comes down. I think all of these are fours and fives for me. Um, she also takes some, what do you call it? Uh, reimagining of some already historical figures for instance Dracula, um, Cleopatra, and I can't think of his name now. I'm sorry, Manu, 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 shit, what else? At any rate, yeah. I of course purposely not telling you about book two and three because you're not gonna, it'll be spoilery if you read book one. I mean if you haven't read book one. Then, a series I was super excited to start slash reread slash was only supposed to read books one and two and went all the way to book ten. Moon Called by Patricia, Patricia Briggs. This is book one in the Mercy Thompson Paranormal Romance series. Now, whereas that one was about vampires, this one is about werewolves mainly and Mercy, who is a coyote shifter, and there are fae vampires and a bunch of random mesh of people that get introduced slowly throughout the series. But this one, mainly you get introduced to the werewolf pack, you see a little bit of the vampires, and then there's Mercy, who is a coyote, a Native American walker backslash coyote shifter. Now, the reason I really enjoy these so much is because, one, the main character is a Native American. There is some Native American lore and not really history, but just like Native American fables and stories kind of mixed in, hence the walker. Um, you delve into that a little bit more throughout the series, not as much in the first book. Now, um, Mercy, who is an auto mechanic, is just very strong, very just kind of rough character. Like the covers, she's never ever this naked. She's usually in like mechanic coveralls or like jeans and a t-shirt. Like I really like the covers, but she's not like sexy tattooed badass. Like Mercy is, let her describe it, plain Jane, Native American woman, little rough around the edges. There is nothing really Mary Sue about her and she is very like, I like the fact that she's a really strong character and she has no qualms about doing what she needs to do to protect people that she cares about even if it means she's gonna have to take a major ass whooping to do so. This is book one. I have reread in the month of October through books 1, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I skipped 2 and 3 because they're like mid-stage with the romance. It was like in limbo in book 2 and 3 and I mean, whatever. I dealt with that already. I don't need to reread that. And then book 6, um, I had to recently reread already because that was, well I can't tell you that I've given other stuff away. But yeah. But I just couldn't put it down because I love this series so much so I skipped from 1 to 4 and then 5, 7, 
and then I just had to finish 8, 9, and 10. 10 was the last one that was released. Which actually was released, I think, in March of this year, being Silence Fallen. I love this series. I love this series. If you would like to read a series about badass female characters who are not dependent, even if they are not the biggest, baddest beast in the room, Mercy Thompson series. So that's what, 10 books already, yeah? Then I, this is also a reread. <laughs> The Bride by Julie Garwood, which I mentioned in one of my fall videos. It is a historical romance novel about an English lady who is forced by her king to go marry a Scottish laird, and they bump heads a little bit at first because she thinks he's just doesn't give two craps about her. She's just there because both of their um, sovereigns order it, but of course they fall in love. There's a little bit of a mystery because Alec Kincaid, who is the Scottish laird in this particular novel, is um, dealing with the death of his first wife and there are a lot of nasty rumors floating around, floating around that basically say either the woman killed herself to get away from him or he killed her. These are the rumors that are floating around in England and we get there and he's still kind of dealing with that bit of a mystery so he's trying to find out what happened to Helena, his first wife, as well as protect his second wife who he thinks is just complete milk toast and is not going to make it in the Highlands because she's English and therefore weak. But it's a really good book. I mean, all historical romance novels are cute to some level, but this one is one of my favorites. I have reread this so many times, it's not even funny. Then there was Dracula by Bram Stoker, which I started with Leanna and Katie. Do I need to tell you the names, channel names again? I mean, I talk about them too much, but whatever. Leanna from over at Leanna's Library and Katie from Read or Write, and I will link their channels down below. We started it, and I found it to be dry. And then the audiobook, like the special edition one that you can stream from Audible that has a full cast of characters in it, was a lot better and it was nowhere near dry. But, the main characters are fuckwits and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So, um, Leanna posted a very well-worded, eloquent, well-thought-eyed video as to why this book was shit. And I will link it down below because she said it way better than I could. I will link that in the description box. But yeah, basically it is sexist, misogynist crap that didn't even have the decency of having a good story surrounding it to make up for it. So you read it and the characters are stupid. New characters are misogynist and the characters are stupid. Dracula. Then I am freaking still working on Nevernight, which is naked still because I'm still freaking reading it. I could have been done with it, but it's just, I don't know, it's just very dense. So once I put it down, it takes me a while to pick it back up. Like once I, I read it and I'm into it, I could just start going through it. If you start to skip all the footnotes, because there are a lot of footnotes. There are a lot of footnotes. My God, the footnotes. But um, once you start to kind of get into the story, one, there are a lot less footnotes. And then, it, but it's still like, it's dense. So it's just for some reason, it's making me butt hurt that I just can't pick it up and get through it like I do normal books so that makes me salty and then I'm just hesitant to pick it back up because I'm like it's taking so long to read it but yeah still working on it we'll finish it tonight or the next night and it will not be on my November TBR because I think it's been on September's and October's like Christ already we finished the damn book then lastly I am working on This Beauty which is the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss this is the special 10th anniversary edition that just came out not that long ago. It is freaking gorgeous. So I've been reading it on my Kindle because I bought the mass market paperback first. The writing's way too damn tiny. So then I got it on Kindle. But then I found the first edition hardback that I have. And then this one came out. So I have four copies of a book I still have not freaking finished. But it's so good. So I was making progress on the Kindle and then I put it down when this one was coming in. This one got here and it's got pictures. It's illustrated. So I really wanted to read it. Like even look at the front two pages. The summary is on like fucking parchment. But yeah. It's very, see how stiff? It's a very stiff book. And I was just terrified to read it and mess it up. So I took it to work with me and then shoved it in my locker and compulsively checked on it every two hours to make sure it was okay down there. Needless to say, I'm going back to the Kindle version. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, I'm, uh, I love this book so much, but I'm still not finished with it, so it will probably be on next month's TBR as well, which I will tell you about my next video. That's it guys, thanks for watching, bye!